Hello and welcome back to the Wisdom Factory. I'm Heidi Hörnlein sitting in Italy and today I have a guest from far away from South Africa, Richard Koch. And we want to talk today about music, actually about opera. I don't know if people know, I was a singer and because of wanting to learn uh, to sing opera, I came to Italy and then I stayed here and you know how life goes on. <laughs> But I'm original uh, from Germany, and there I did a lot of church music, like Bach and Beethoven, not Beethoven, not in church, but Lieder, these things. But I'm very much interested in opera and in how to develop the voice so that a big voice comes out. And this is, will be one of the topics we will be talking about. But before we start, I want to invite you, Richard, to tell me a little bit who you are, and then we go on what you are doing, and then we are going into the topic. Over to you. Okay, as, as you heard, my name is Richard Koch, and I was born in South Africa, and I grew up here. And after university, I went to work in the United Kingdom. For, I was there for eight years. I studied first for a year there, uh, because I too was uh, brought up in church music. And I got a scholarship to study at the Royal School of Church Music in England. But after that, I went to work in a cathedral in Chichester in Sussex. And I was a singer there. I was a counter tenor in the choir. Mm -hmm. And I sang for seven years in that choir. Obviously, I also played the organ because that was my, my main instrument other than singing. And then I came back to South Africa uh, because uh, after eight years away, I really wanted to come home again. And very soon I got involved in all the music making in South Africa. I started two choirs here, which still go today, 40 years later, uh, a chamber choir and a symphonic choir. And in fact, this very weekend we are singing, you mentioned Beethoven, we are singing the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven because of the mm, yeah. 250 years of Beethoven. Of Beethoven yeah. And in that performance, we have four outstanding young singers, uh, m all of whom have taken part in opera because you asked about opera and you mentioned opera. Uh, my, my life has mostly been involved in orchestral music and choral music. But because I use a lot of singers in my concerts, I have dealt with opera singers and with opera companies, and I've been involved in opera in quite a few ways here over the years. Well, while I was living in England, I also was part of an opera company called Opera 70. I was the uh, repetiteur and the keyboard player. It was a small company, touring company, which... Uh, performed in the south of England. And we performed things like Don Giovanni, Albert Herring, uh, The Beggar's Opera. I think those were the three that I did in the three years when I was working with them. Um, but I've come to know a lot of opera singers here in South Africa because we have some outstanding young singers who are coming from South Africa, making a name for themselves all over the world now. So, and I've had a hand in that because I also, one of the things I do is to run a trust which provides funding for students to study. Now these are undergraduate bursaries. Uh, and so I support them at the beginning of their studies. And then if I can, I find further funding for them so that they can continue with their studies. Uh, mm -hmm. I also, for several years, we've run master classes, and the winners of, well, winners or the people who are chosen from that master class uh, go to study in Cologne with Professor Joseph Krochka. And several of those people have done very well for themselves, and they are now uh, firmly installed in opera houses in Europe and further afield in America also. Yeah. So that's basically my story. I'm still active. Um, I'm now 70 years old, but I still am very active uh, doing concerts, 
putting on festivals. At the moment, we are in a Mozart festival because we just had Mozart's birthday yesterday. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And uh, the Beethoven concert is the final event of the Mozart festival. So that's basically my story. <laughs> that's a wonderful story. <laughs> yeah. It is a wonderful story. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I've had a very, very happy life. And I feel I've achieved quite a lot with a little money here because resources for the arts are very limited in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the money we've had to generate ourselves from doing concerts. I've got various corporates who fund the bursary scheme for the students, but it's really quite tough here now, as I think it is all over the world, except that in many countries, uh, government supports the arts in a really meaningful way. Here, the support for if you like, Western art forms is dwindling rapidly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I tell you how I came to know about you. There was on Medici TV, uh, there was um, a documentary which was called Singing for Life, I think. And it was about South Africa and young black singers, how they come and study uh, opera. And when they have already these voices before they go to the audition and that they they learned by listening to music, uh, they learned how to sing. And I was so amazed how in a different culture, people can be excited of uh, a music, uh, which is not their culture. And as we saw lately come out uh, in the Western world with these voices, which are incredible you know we have uh, let's say invented opera but with relatively small voices the more you go let's say to towards germany normally the voices are little no when i came to italy my voice was very small and then i learned a little bit to open it up but uh, already in italy there then people were more still more free to utter their voices so naples was famous that people just could sing and I imagine that in places like Africa, the restrictions were not so, the cultural restrictions like in our countries, they don't have to sit quiet in the school bank all the time. So the voices could still stay in their natural connection to to the body and to the expression. And that's what I think why these people are so great in in their voices and they are are winning, the, the, the competitions, you know, there are quite a few of one competitions with voices which are not only big, but which have a little bit of a different melting capacities. I don't know how to say that, yep. you know, from the heart, there is something. Yeah. And, no, but, and there's, a, there's a reason for this. Yes, that's because, what I want to ask. <laughs> yeah, because choral music has played a very big part in life in South Africa. We have a lot of choirs here. We have a lot of choirs here and many, many young people uh, sing in choirs. Most schools have very active choirs and the style of singing amongst the black community is very big and very open. So it's not like a cathedral choir or a refined style of singing. It's a very particular style of singing. And someone was here from Germany the other day, and he said the other place where he's found this full sound of singing is in Georgia. Uh And so he's trying to make a link between Germany and Georgia and South Africa. So this was very interesting to me. Uh, Also, the vowel sounds uh, in, let's say, Zulu are very similar to the vowel sounds of Italian. So they are used to resonating on these big open vowel sounds. So they take naturally, South African singers take naturally to singing opera. And also storytelling is very big in Africa. And so many people are natural storytellers and they like to take part in storytelling. So this is why I think um, many people, many young black singers have taken so easily to the operatic form. 
Yeah, because they are stories and they are about the drama yes. of life, you know, and uh, which they probably know well. <laughs> and so they do. Uh, yeah. South Africa, you know, throughout its history has had a lot of drama. Yes. yes. Uh, and people are used to drama. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the thing, what I heard that uh, in the apartheid, black singers were not allowed to, to sing in the white music, let's say. Uh, is it true? Okay, so during the apartheid years, uh, culturally, we were very divided here. But people certainly sang. And in fact, uh, singing in choirs was a very popular pastime in the apartheid days. Um, first of all, it didn't cost very much. Secondly, it was a place where the community could get together and do something positive. Mm -hmm. And so uh, singing became uh, a way of protesting uh -huh. and a way of expressing feelings about uh, how life is and about politics and about all sorts of things. So people sang their way to freedom here. That's wonderful. And singing yeah. is known to be connecting, you know, when you sing together, Definitely. when you do music together also, but singing is even more immediate, no? Because the voice is the most immediate instrument. There is yes. nothing in between. So it's really coming yeah. out of you. So yeah. when and you there sing are from people, your heart. Yeah. Yes. And when they are resonating together, that is creating connection and, and, and the strength of, of group expression. Yes. That's yeah. We undervalue this a little bit in the northern countries. We are so much focused on being everything right, and <laughs> you know yeah. that we yeah. undervalue the the uh, expressional and the how can I say? Yeah, we have co co community too. But when when I sang in choirs, I sang also in a radio choir for a while. There was so much more the competition part. I'm better than you you know, so this thing, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I have to tell you that uh, choir competitions, but not between individuals, but between choirs are very big in South Africa. Oh, that's very, good. Very big. Yeah. I talk about individual. The yes, first no, soprano, I, I can sing the yeah. first soprano. You have to yeah, sing yeah, the yeah. second, you know, this yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was my upbringing. And I find it so much better that uh, you express together without saying, oh, you are wrong here and you are wrong here, you know, what we Germans tend to do. <laughs> yeah, things are fairly free and easy here. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. You know, that was the reason why I came to Italy, because I wanted to come out of the narrowness of, of singing and also the narrowness of my voice. And in Italy, at least then, 30 years ago or something, 30, yeah, even more. Yeah. That, that was still, you know, more, <laughs> more yeah. open, more, more. You, you still could hear people sing along the street, which today yeah. Oh, yeah. you don't anymore. You know? But here you hear people singing a lot in the That's streets, uh, in public places. People sing a lot here. Yeah, yeah you know, here the, the tax things have destroyed that because the copyright thing, if you sing something, you have to to first ask uh, permission, you know, and pay <laughs> money and all this stuff. And it ended up that people stopped singing freely, you know, on the streets because yeah. the police, <laughs> cultural police yeah. or whatever that is. So yeah. that's better. <laughs> So, uh, so let, do you want to know more about opera companies, for example, in South Africa? No, I still am interested in the, okay. in the apartheid thing and how that changed. How uh, were there um, people coming, uh, black people coming to the white opera performances? And uh, if not, uh, how was that organized? And then when could they come in and how were they accepted uh, then okay. uh, into okay. opera? So uh, in, in the 60s, uh, well, going further back than that, there was, you know, in South Africa, there were many distinctions of color. So you had white people and you had black people and you had colored people who were mixed race people and you had Indian people and Chinese people. Everyone was classified 
according to which race you were. Uh, and for many years, dating back to the 1940s even, there was a, a colored opera company in Cape Town called the Aon Group. And they had their own opera house, E-O-A-N. They had their own opera house, um, which put on um, operas under someone called Dr. Joseph Manka. And I believe he was Italian. Mm -hmm. And he discovered a lot of talent in that community. Uh, this was denied to a large extent to black people. And I'm, I'm making the distinction between colored people, mixed race people and black people. Uh, and it was really only after say 1988 onwards that black people started coming into the mainstream of operatic singing. But they made rapid strides because they were just so good. <laughs> and so the opera company in Cape Town, for example, soon was taking on many black singers in the chorus and as soloists until eventually the, the whole company was more or less entirely made up of black singers, uh, which meant then that after 1994, uh, they could then uh, perform and travel and do all those things that would be part of a normal society. Mm -hmm. That's good. And now there are many of the big names of them uh, are spread all over the world. You know, and I was thinking when I uh, went here in the countryside, I go very rare to rarely to opera. But when I was in Berlin and in my youth, I went to, and also in Rome, I went to opera often. And we always had the thing when Otello came, there was a white man with, uh, with coal on, yes. you know. Yeah. And today we can have these people of the right color of the row and sing in this perfect way as well as with mm, butterfly no the question yes. is uh, how do you know how do these people feel when they ha perform in row in Mon monostados for instance this is not a very nice role no for a black person uh, because he is considered the, the bad guy and so uh, do they see that as racist or how do they they definitely do and, and in fact it's very interesting that you mention this because just yesterday I was talking to a young singer who is staying with me at the moment, who is about to go uh, to join a Deutsche Oper in Berlin under Barenboim. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that very subject uh, because um, he has, at some stages, he's been asked to audition for parts and he went to audition and the director said, no, I don't want a black Tamino, for example. Mm. Okay. And this, I think, shocked him uh, because he doesn't see himself as black. He sees himself as a tenor. <laughs> uh, and we were talking about monostatos and the fact that Still, in, in our everyday speech, we see the color white is to do with purity and angels, and the color black is to do with devils and darkness and evil. And so we have within us a sort of inbuilt uh, thing about color, uh, which is so. I mean, it's, it's a sort of historical thing. So Monostatos is a bad guy hmm. and he's black. Yeah. And it's yeah. also, I think, a, a sort of biological thing because uh, the day is light, white, let's say, you know, at night it's dark. Everybody looks like dark. And I think it's, it's, it's a sort of uh, from the origins of humankind that we uh, see this and then the error is to transfer it to, to skin color. Yes. You know? But yeah. uh, the, 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 how do you say, the natural response is, is there. So we need to grow up in our consciousness and realize what it really is and not confound it with things which has nothing to do. But with the other thing... No, that, it's, 
it's absolutely institutionalized that yeah, way that's of the thinking problem. that's the problem that's the problem yes. and that's what uh, we have to fight against and 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 change attitudes yeah the, yeah. the, it's a little bit of a of a problem I, I i tell you now what i think i came here to italy and they didn't take me because i have an accent when i went to uh, to german opera or operetta where people have to talk a lot and you hear all sorts of strange accents in talking uh, you think like this then when you see uh, this is all the opera is grown in a white population no? and you see Susanna or Tamino in black you first think a little bit uh, you know but uh, this is just the habit of, of, of seeing the things now I'm wondering if we had the whole everybody black doing Mozart that probably wouldn't create uh, the same strange uh, uh, Correct. Con contrast yes. And we did, we did have an opera company here called Opera Africa, okay. which was an all black company. Mm -hmm. And they did uh, operas like that with, uh, with, uh, you know, all uh, a black cast. So the differences when they're not so obvious, as you say. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. So the question is, how do we get away from our habitual way of wanting to hear things i mean here is fine everybody can sing and on the radio you don't know how they look like but how they look like and how can we uh, change that i mean when we made black color on otello or monostatus it was ridiculous either you know so <laughs> and in fact as you know from the the prime minister of canada it's it counts badly against you now because he went to a fancy part, fancy dress party with black face and people don't like it now. They find it racist. Yeah, I mean, this is, is, is really difficult to sort that out, you know? Yeah. So, mm, I don't know yeah. what to say about it. Uh, it yeah. do, do you know, is there, um, let's say black opera, not only in performance, but m music, apart from jazz and these things we know, uh, like opera? Is there opera composing? Like, like Porgy and Bess? Yeah, sure. Or oh, yeah. do you mean in South Africa? Yeah. In, do you mean in, in South Africa? In Africa altogether, yeah. Yes, there is. There was, there's an, an opera by Professor Mzilikazi Kumalo. Oh, I can't um, understand. You have to write me the names afterwards. I'll write it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's called Princess Magogo. Mm -hmm. And it's about... Uh, the mother of uh, Prince Butelezi, who was a singer herself, and he wrote an opera about her, which has been performed uh, all over Europe, and, and of course here in South Africa, and in America. That's good. That's, that's yeah. my curiosity. And is that also, um, let's say, a part of your studies at the university? Uh, composing not only Western like music, but uh, composing more, let's say, art music, but maybe out of the roots of the African context. Yeah, but you can imagine that's also a sensitive subject, mm -hmm. uh, like cultural appropriation. Uh, so w w I don't think it would work very well for a white person to write a black opera. A Gershwin because did. it would be. Sorry? Gershwin did. Gershwin. Gershwin did, indeed. Mm -hmm. But he, that was in another era. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be more tricky now. Mm -hmm. So how could... I, I don't know what... Yeah, yeah. I wonder how it, it, that could be reconciled, maybe in, in... You know, just to give a more incentive to, to, to have but a... There are, mm -hmm. But there are many black composers also working in South Africa. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Yes. There are many black composers working here. And they're writing oratorios and epics and operas and all sorts of things. They are not very 
known so. Uh, is there is there a place where we can see them? Is on YouTube? Do they have? Uh, well, uh, there probably are. I would just give you if I could give you a list of names, then you yes, can sure. look them up. Yeah, do that. Do yeah. that. I would be very curious. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, I think our Western music has a long history and is wonderful, but it's, uh, you know, it's time to, to include other directions, other, other, uh, other yeah. uh, continents as super sure, you know, but also cross fertilize each other in some way. Yes. And that yeah, in yeah, yeah. our consciousness comes also, instead of looking down, on all these primitive people that we learn that they have something to say to say you know that they have something to offer and they must and, be known and, for that <laughs> yeah but they're also they're not primitive people and that's they what are, i say but we have still yeah. you know this uh, colonialism view on on primitivity you know we the, the western in the history in the past uh, centuries they thought we are advanced we are in a certain sense advanced, but only in a certain sense, you know, and the levels of development for uh, rational yeah. philosophy, blah, 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 blah. But we are advanced. I can tell you what, uh, on the conference, there was a speaker, Zeba, oh, I've forgotten his name. I, it's so difficult to remember the name. And he said, the worst thing which the, the colonists did to Africa was not to get all the resources, but it was to export their way of thinking, to impress yes. their way of thinking on the country. And that gave me really an, ah, yes. We ah. think we have this, uh, how do you say? Superior culture. Yes, this idea that we are superior, but you know, when you feel superior, and in some ways this happens now in, in maybe in other areas, then you don't even need to get your, wrap your head around what the others do because they are just bleh. So you don't even look into it. You don't even listen to what they have to say. And this is a very bad way of, of being in the world, but it seems to be that humans are sort of inclined to do that. But coming back to the topic, um, I find it good if you can send me something and I would like to, to listen to it and maybe post it and, and, and bring attention of people to, <clears throat> to a different way of seeing music, let's say. <laughs> Wonderful. So now I, I under, interrupted you. You wanted to tell me something else before, before we went back to the apartheid thing? About, um, we used to have here in South Africa, four performing arts councils. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, in South Africa, before 1994, we had four provinces. Mm -hmm. And each province had an arts council. And in those days, uh, there was ballet and opera and symphonic music and drama uh, in these four arts councils. They all had a a home, like a state theater, but now it's rather different. And opera really now is more or less limited to Cape Town. Mm. Uh, there is still an opera company in Cape Town. Most of the time they're on tour because they, uh, they can earn more money abroad than they can here. Mm. And they're a very good opera company. Um, and we've exported many people from that opera company also as like uh, repetitors, uh, conductors, and so on to other parts of the world. Um, now, as I say, now, so we had quite an active opera life here where I live in Johannesburg, but now there's almost no opera here. Mm. Ballet is struggling, symphony orchestras are struggling because there's no proper funding for these things. Yeah. Yeah. So the operatic life here has become diminished, dramatically diminished, which is why our singers have to find work elsewhere in the world, because there is so little work here for them. So for example, uh, two of the singers that I'm using for the Ninth Symphony, I'm flying in from Germany. 
I probably could find singers here, but it's, it's uh, easier to find the people I know well who can do this easily from Germany. South African singers I'm talking about. I, we're using only South African singers. Um, and this, I try to do this a lot by exposing young singers in the concerts that I do, because I do a lot of concerts every year, uh, often with operatic material, oratorios, uh, Beethoven Ninth Symphony, all these things need singers. So I use local singers wherever possible. If we have a visiting singer from somewhere, then I put a South African singer with them so that they can get more experience. So that is the current situation here as far as opera singing goes is not good. Mm. And I can think it will only get worse, not better. Uh, yeah, from, I'm talking now Western operatic music. There's plenty of opportunity for local African music because most choirs would sing that. But what is interesting is that many black choirs like to sing Western opera and black soloists want to sing Western opera and they do it well, as you know. So this is a strange uh, tension in South African society, current South African society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they need people like you who try to get funding and work hard to, to do all these things. Yeah, and we do a lot of crossover concerts also with, uh, we call it Afro-symphonic music. Uh, but it's, that's more on uh, the light music and sort of quasi-pop side of things. Mm -hmm. So I do quite a lot of that. And it creates a lot of work for singers also. Yeah. Um, no. I'm wondering if you have recordings or, uh, for instance, contracts with Medici TV that they record some of these things uh, that people can, can, you know, have a taste of what you are doing. Do you use uh, YouTube or other channels? Yeah, where... we use YouTube. I can ask my, my daughter can send stuff to you, yeah. if you like. We can just send you links to these various things. Yeah. Then you can see yeah. the sort of things we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So last, the last one that I'm thinking of, we had, uh, I don't know if you know of a singer called Gaston Rivero. He's from Uruguay originally. And he came to sing here. He, he was brought by a friend of mine to South Africa. Uh, because mostly we cannot afford international singing stars uh, because the exchange rate here is not good. And so a singer has to, they have to agree that they will not get their normal fees here because we can't get, we can't afford them. So a friend of mine brought the singer and we used him in a big open air concert. And then he did an opera concert, pure opera concert, uh, singing with two South African singers so that, they also get then the experience of working with him. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the funding uh, for this sort of, of music is a little bit critical. I think also in the, yes. in the West, Western music, because, yeah. you know, when I came to Italy, I thought this is the country of opera and of music, but actually it's not. In the school, they don't have they don't have any music lessons, or maybe a little bit playing the flute. I once did uh, lessons with a teacher. She had to give singing lessons uh, to uh, to a cho choir and things and music lessons in her class, and she was what we call stonato. She couldn't find the notes. So yeah. imagine when a person like this teaches children to sing yeah. Yeah, 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 and she yeah. cannot hold the melody herself and things like that. And the, the, um, the general level of musical culture is very low. Then there is uh, the higher, you know, the real good yes. musicians. They have some, I don't know, parents who are uh, connected or to music. I mean, not necessarily to, uh, uh, to people who, Yep. Bring them ahead. Also, that is important. But but there are some very 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 good musicians. But there is not what we had in Germany. This middle class where I sang in the churches and things like that. Yep. It's here. It's just not. It's it's not not normal. They. It, I did some concerts here in the in the in the village. It nobody came. 
as soon as uh, somebody taught us this ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum music, they all come, you know. <laughs> but I want to say this culture is not there anymore. Mm, it, it's gone. So. And, well, we, and we do have, uh, I have to say that we, uh, in Cape Town, there is a large uh, German community in Cape Town who come, they spend six months here or three or four months and they are great concert goers. Yeah, we do. And they come to a lot of the concerts that I do. So we could have a concert, say there are 400 people, at least 200 of them are German speaking. <laughs> and this is I quite strange. I would come strange. too. <laughs> Yeah. I would come yeah, too, yeah, yeah. because yeah. really, uh, I, I love to go to concerts and, uh, yeah. you know, when, when they are good. At the beginning, I, I sometimes went to, you know, the local concerts around. And then after a while, I thought, mm, no, the quality we had in Germany, even in local concerts, um, here we don't yeah. find it, you know. Or you go then for, you have to go extra to the big concerts halls, you know, and get the international people. But, you know. That's not, I wanted to say that the, the culture of music is gone in Italy. You know, we have it much more in Germany, a culture of, of you know. But I think, actually, I think this is a, a worldwide phenomenon because mm. funding for the arts is getting less worldwide now, except in China, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have to recover. Uh, on the other hand, singing, as we said before, has a, uh, other um, advantages, especially for getting old, you know, I had a, a person in a, a scientist, a young, quite a young scientist, and she did research on uh, how um, in older age, the singing can help to keep uh, the voice, you know, that they don't get this old people's voice, yeah. and also to, to, to be connected with, uh, to stay connected with life. And it was amazing. Yeah how much yeah. influences only one or two hours a week to sing, you know, in a, in a well, It's good for breathing. It's good for health. It's good for all sorts of things. Yeah. So maybe we should go on this, on this line yeah. and promote this from that Definitely. direction. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have asked all the questions I wanted to ask. Do you want to, to add something? I would be happy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I remain, I just want to say this, that I remain very positive about music in South Africa. We have incredibly musical people in this country. We are exporting a lot of very good musicians from this country, but still more and more are coming up. Mm. And this is, it's a wonderful thing for us that the sad thing is all the best ones are gobbled up by you know, Europe or America or wherever. So, but that's, it makes us proud that we have good singers all over the world now. And uh, I'm still very positive about what we do and what we can do here. And actually that's what keeps us going is that we, we do still have uh, amazing young people that we work with here and we can develop them and get them to a stage where they can actually make a living from music because I was very lucky in my life that I could always create a space for myself where I could make a living. And now that's my task is to make it possible for young people to make a living through what I love and what they love. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. I think this is a wonderful statement to, to end the conversation. And I do yeah. hope that this music we love which doesn't mean that I want to exclude other music, not at all, yeah. but that we maintain uh, the possibility for opera singing, because in my uh, northern understanding, opera singing is the way of singing where you can open most, you know, and um, it's Bach, I love Bach, but that's, that's a different way. It's not this expressive way of, of, of being. And so, uh, and, that we can maintain that to be able to open the voice because it's not only good for the music, but also good for the people to be able to have this contact yeah. with their uh, expressive instrument. Yeah, and then what I would wish that the cultures come together instead of fighting each other <laughs> to co-create <laughs> and, and, uh, and find something new, <clears throat> really new yeah. in music, also in music.
Well, that's what we try to do here. Yeah. That's wonderful. But you know, uh, you sort of need to do it because you are in a position where you are not as privileged as we are, you know? So <laughs> you sort of have to. Well, and actually, that's a very important thing because I came back here and partly because in, in England, when I was working there, once you get into a certain road, you have to stay in that road. And here, I've been able to do many, many different things because there are fewer people here who do things. So I can do many different things. And I did do many different things. And it, that was good for me because I could uh, affect people in many different fields also. Exactly. Yeah. You are not so close in a box as we are yes. when, when we do that. And you have more freedom and possibility to be creative, you know, so. All of that. <laughs> That's wonderful. I wish you all the best and I'm waiting for your thank information. You. And um, thank you. And next time when It's I come pleasure. to Johannesburg, I was there last year. I will, will come and see you at a concert. Of Please do. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.